Hi folks, thank you for checking out my video. Recently, while I was cleaning my garage, I discovered we have mouse poop in the garage. So after rummaging through my electronic toolboxes, I found some cool electronic devices that I'm going to use to build an electronic mousetrap. Stay tuned, let's build this uh, electronic mousetrap together. Have some fun, learn something, and hopefully catch some mice. Okay, let's see what we have here. We're gonna use the circuit board to build the circuit uh, for the mousetrap. Next, you have the PIR motion sensor. It stands for Passive Infrared Motion Sensor. And so it looks like we're going to build a motion sensor mousetrap. So next we have a MOSFET. This is a uh, transistor. It's metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. Wow, a mouthful. So I'll talk a little bit more as we go along in terms of its function. The next item here is the pool solenoid. So this is a cool device here. And what it does is when you apply electricity through here, uh, it produces a magnetic field to create a magnetic pool to pull the shaft down like this. So as you can imagine, I'm going to use this to close the door to the mousetrap. And then we have a breadboard that we're going to test our circuit on. Let's get to it. Let's see if uh, this idea is going to work. To do the testing, we're going to need some jumper wires and also some alligator jumper wire as well. So we can uh, run the battery. First, let's hook up the PIR sensor. A little bit about the sensor. You have three pins here. You can actually open this up to see which one is ground and which one is supply voltage. So the middle pin is the signal voltage. The first pin here is ground and then it's supply, okay? So based on that, I'm going to use the gray jumper line to do the output voltage white for the supply line and then black for the uh, the ground let's close it back on like so in the back here there's two trims we'll set up the sensitivity level in terms of the time delay and then how far and how close the distance for the heat signature for the motion sensor to send out the output signal. We're going to plug the white to the positive, the black wire to the negative signal wire. Uh, we just place it here for now, right there. So next we are going to place the MOSFET. This MOSFET will act as a switch once it's received the signal voltage from the motion sensor. So the first pin is called the gate pin that will take the 3.3 volts from here to serve as a bridge to allow electricity flow from the drain to the source. So I'm going to place this right there like so. So I'll just, I'll just leave it right there for now. So it aligns with the, uh, the gate pin. Next, we're going to plug the positive line and the negative line for the battery. We're going to use the nine volt battery here to uh, do this test. So first we're going to see if the three volts being sent out from the motion sensor can actually light up this LED. I'm going to quickly move this a little bit closer here. Cool. So the gauge will get three volts. This LED can operate on like a 2.5 volts. So I'm going to put a resistor and this is a 1000 ohms resistor. So since I'm running the nine voltage, uh, the resistor will lower the voltage level to maybe approximately five volts, right from nine to five. And so I'm going to put the positive legs here, right? The positive is always longer. On, on an LED light and then connect it to the, the drain. Cool, I wanna see. So nine volts will lower to five and then this will take maybe a, a, around two to three volts here. That is similar amount of the voltage that the, the motion can send out. And then we're going to have to connect the source pin of the MOSFET. Uh, I can put it here. This is the ground pin to ground so that there's a direction for electricity to flow. 
so the jumper wire will be connected to the, the positive, like so. This one here, which is the battery line. So this is positive, and this is negative. Let's see if it's gonna work. It's kinda of hard to do this. Let me bring this out here, like so. Stay with me, folks. Okay, so if it lights up, that means we're getting the three point volt signal. Boom, see? Wow, so it lights up. Okay, for motion sensor, for the first minute, it's gonna light up on and off until it get itself saturated for it to be stabilized. This tells me that the MOSFET is actually using the three volts from here and it's uh, creating a passageway for uh, electricity to uh, flow from the drain to the source, which is good. Boom, it's working. So now we know that the motion sensor is sending out the output voltage and then it can actually activate the MOSFET. With that, let's see if it could actually drive a bigger load. So I'm taking this off and then uh, in replace of the LED, I'm going to see if the three voltage signal source is strong enough to actually drive the solenoid. All right, so I replaced the LED light with the solenoid. Uh, the only difference is that I did not include the resistor. The solenoid here is, it runs from six to 12 volts and it uses about 70 milliamps to two amps. So it does require quite a bit of current, which may be the 3.4, 3 point volts from here might not be sufficient enough to open that flood gauge for electricity to flow through from the battery. So if it works, this thing should pull in. If it doesn't work, then we have to figure out something else. I'm going to connect it to the battery. Sorry. Okay, so that worked, look. So it looks like it's working when I tap this, right? Let me see if I put my hand on the sensor that will work on Q. Okay, so one, two, three. Boom, wow, beautiful. Okay, so now we know that the output voltage of the motion sensor can actually activate the MOSFET to drive a bigger load. Here is a diagram of the circuit. Uh, it's a very simple diagram. I'm going to run everything off this nine volts battery here. So current will go here through the VCC in and then come out to the ground. The output signal line will send out that 3.3 volts to activate the MOSFETs. As you can see here, I put some resistors here, 1K here, and then a 10K resistor uh, to pull down any possible current from going into the MOSFET. As you can see, it's a parallel circuit, so the currents um, have multiple ways. So from the load, the current will go through the middle pin, which is the drain. So I mentioned drain a lot. So drain is actually the positive pin of this uh, MOSFET. The current will go into the drain pin and then it will come out the source pin. The source pin is the negative pin. This MOSFET is a, an amazing device. This is a logic level MOSFET. Here's a data sheet, right? As you can see here, the threshold voltage is about two, if I'm reading this correctly. So the 3.3 volts is sufficient enough to actually open the channel for current to come through. So this is the diagram. Now we are going to uh, do some soldering and from there we can build the mousetrap. Okay folks, so I soldered the uh, circuit together. It's a really simple circuit. We're gonna test it out, see if it's gonna work. So if it doesn't work, we'll have to go back to the drawing board. So if it clicks, it works. If it doesn't click, and then we'll have to spend more time. Ooh, it works. Okay, cool. Mouse come along, boom. The next step will be to build the mouse trap and mount the circuit on. Okay, so these are the materials I am going uh, to use to make the mousetrap. We want to make this a humane mousetrap. My kids are very serious about not killing the mouse and that's why instead of 
purchasing the strap that we just killed them. I'm just going to make this uh, so we can catch and then release them in, in the field. So this is what a mouse trap will look like. We're going to put like a see-through wall here on the back as well so that we can trap the mouse. There will be an, a door here like so and it's going to be connected to the solenoid. The mouse will go through here. There's a little hallway there that will gear the mouse to go a certain direction. So the mouse will come this way and then it will turn. There's a little tiny hallway there. It has no choice but to turn this way because we're going to put food way back here. So once the mouse walked through this way, we're going to capture the heat signature. This is where we're going to put the um, motion sensor. Once we capture the heat signature, it's going to trigger the solenoid to release the door. This door here will just come down like that, locks it in, and then the mouse will spend the night in there and the next morning we'll open up the back door here, release the mouse and let it go free. There's no need to kill the mouse. We're done. This is what it looks like. So it's a simple circuit. As you can see, I did eventually give the MOSFET a heat sinker just in case. I know it's really low voltage, but I just wanted to be safe. So I did come across a dilemma while I was thinking this through. The problem is once the mouse is trapped in the cage, it is going to trigger the sensor and that will cause the solenoid to continue to go off and on, off and on, which is going to waste the battery. So the solution to the dilemma is the uh, creation of this door here, as you can see. In this door, there's a little opening, elongated opening. And what you see here is the kill switch, right? It looks like this, a really tiny switch. This is a normally open switch with a little button here. In order to turn on the trap, so I pull the door like this, uh, the button of the switch will be pressed against the door, like so. And then it'll activate the trap by turning on the, the whole system. Once the motion sensor is activated by the mouse, the door will come down like so. Let me just, here, boom, like so. The whole system will be shut off because now the button here will be open because of the opening of this door here, as you can see. Let's test it out to see if this thing is going to work. I end up lowering the sensor a little bit lower so that it could be a little more sensitive to the mouse. The uh, door can activate a little bit faster. So when I reach in there, there should be enough heat signature for the sensor to pick up and then uh, release the door. There we go. Boom. See that? So it worked. We're gonna try it again, just to make sure. I'm going to turn this around so you can see. And I'm trying not to move anything there. Okay. Here we go. There you go. Once the door is shut, the switcher is open. So there'll be no electricity going through even if the mouse go back and forth in front of the sensor. So how cool is that? So here we go. Tonight is a big night for this mouse trap. So the mouse is going to get a nice treat tonight. I'm going to see if this is going to work as bait. Look at that, nice and delicious. So here is the back of the trap and you can lift this up like so. The food will go in right there. The food station there. While the sensor is on the side, as you've seen previously. I will close the back door like so. In the morning, if we happen to catch one, we'll bring it to the field and just release it. I'm excited to see if this trap is actually going to catch a mouse. What I'm gonna do now is set it up in the garage.
there you have it. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video. I hope it gave you some ideas on your next project, especially using the PIR motion sensor, the MOSFET, and the solenoid. These are amazing electronic devices. You can do so much with them. Again, thank you, and I hope to see you again soon.